Hi, my name is Patrick, and I know nothing about car care. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Detailing 101. Welcome back to the Maguire's UK YouTube channel. Before we start this video, make sure that you have subscribed, you've clicked the not notification bell to get notified whenever a new video is going live, and you've given this video a thumbs up. In today's episode, what are we covering, Dale? We are talking about my favorite topic when it comes to detailing, machine polishing. So we're gonna be talking about how to revive, refine, and protect your paint using our DA machine polisher. Yeah, this is gonna pretty much be a, a, a breakdown of actually how to machine polish. Um, we've covered videos about the compound polish and wax separately, so if you wanna check those out, click the little uh, thing in that corner, I think, um, and go check those out. But today is primarily focusing on actually how to use the machine polisher. Please. Exactly that, it's the basic steps that it comes to machine polishing. Now, a lot of people have horror stories when it comes to machine polishing, really, um, when it comes to using a DA polish, it's so easy. And you know, this is not some sort of secret organization where you need to have like four days worth of training to machine polish. You know, whenever we get people in for a day in the bay, I tend to have them machine polish in the bonnet within 10 minutes of being in the bay. So it really is nice and simple. All I'm gonna do is show you the basic steps of how to do it most effectively. Fine, cool. Right, without further ado, let's crack on with today's video on the bonnet. That we've purposely scratched. We have purposely scratched it. We've taken a soft brush. Yeah. And... Scratched it. Scratched it all up. Okay, so we did mention previously the products that we're gonna be using today. Let's just go over um, so far. We clayed the car. Yes, so the car's been washed and then brought into the bay and then we've clayed it uh, to remove the above surface contaminants. You always wanna make sure you do this when machine polishing because you don't wanna push those uh, contaminants further into the paint and creating more scratching as well. So, you know, evaluate the surface. Is it feel rough to the touch uh, or sticky? Make sure you clay bar it and that's gonna make your machine polishing so much easier. So, that's done. So we're gonna move on to the compound and this is your revival stage. So we're gonna be using the ultimate compound with our foam cutting disc. We don't use the word aggressive, but this is the most effective way of removing your scratching as well. So it's your step one. So this is the backbone. This is the real kind of strength when it comes to removing the scratching as well. Then we're gonna move into refining. So this is when we're gonna enhance the gloss on the paint. We're gonna really back off from the pressure and the speed, and we're just gonna massage the ultimate polish into the paint to give that real wet look gloss. And that's using the polishing pad, And that's right? using the yellow polishing disc. So this is softer than the compounding. We're gonna, each time we move up a stage, we're gonna do less work, less effort, and less time, which is great for everyone. So we've revived it, we've refined it, then we're gonna talk about protection. So we're gonna be using the ultimate liquid wax using our black finishing disc. Now, of all the pads, this is by far the softest, um, so each time we're going to be using less product, less pressure, less time, less effort. Cool. And the machine we're going to be using today is? Our MT320. So this is our machine polisher. One of the amazing things about this is the digital torque management. Now, we all say to use the weight of the machine itself. It's quite a heavy machine. Um, but if you do decide to bear down slightly on the machine, this will increase the revs, which will make sure you don't lose any speed, which is fantastic. You can just keep working away at the surface. Now, some other bonus kind of features. Obviously we've got the multi-speed there, but we also have a nice little table here to give you the average speeds of the job you want to do. So we're talking about swell and defect removal. That's your kind of step one, four, eight to five, eight. Now considering this goes right up to seven, five, it's quite a moderate speed. And then waxing and polishing, this is the refining and protection stage. We're gonna slow the machine down to three, eight to four, eight. So it's a really nice, well-balanced machine. It is designed uh, for professional use and the kind of home hobbyist enthusiast use as well. So it's nice and gentle. It's got a gradual start on it, which means you put it down on the paintwork, you turn it on, it's gonna gradually get to that speed rather than just straight up, go right up to those reps. Also here, we have the trigger to turn it on. We also have the autopilot button now, which means you can relax while holding it. Because the biggest thing is to chill out. When you're machine polishing, let the machine do it. So just relax your arms. Don't hold on for dear life to the machine. Really nice and gentle grip because um, then you won't feel that vibration all the way through your arms. So, nice easy machine to use. It's got the hook and loop system on there, so the pads that 
quick and easily interchangeable. And there we go. Right, let's, um, let's evaluate the paint, see how bad it is, and then crack on. So as you can see, we've used a soft brush to mark up the paint. Um, it is pretty twirly, if you ask me. So we're gonna use the Ultimate Compound and the red cooking disc to sort that out. Exactly that. What we're gonna do first is we wanna soften the pad. Now, it's quite a nice firm putting pad. We need it to be firm to remove air scratching as well. So yeah. What I like to do is open up them pores so I can feed a bit more product into there and make it a bit softer. Okay. So it's not gonna make a dramatic difference, but what it's gonna do is gonna relax all those kind of foam fibers and allow us to prime the pad better. Next part, we're gonna prime the pad. Now, traditionally, you would see people using kind of lubrication on the surface um, or lubricating the pad. What we wanna do is use the product itself solely because it's a working product. We okay. wanna lubricate the pad and the surface using the product itself so it can keep doing the job it's supposed to do. We don't wanna dilute that in any way. Yeah, So that makes sense. Yeah. So you only do this at the start of a detail. Oh, that was a pretty good one. Yeah, thanks. So I've just got a nice foam spreader. Um, you can use an applicator pad, you can do use whatever I just, I've just got one of these. I'm just gonna get all that product into the pad. So this means that the surface and the pad are nice and lubricated. It allows it to spin better. It just means it's going to get a better performance out of the product and the pad and the machine. Like I say, this might seem a bit extreme, but you only do it at the start of a detail. Yeah, and I guess you're, you're not going to be compounding every two weeks. So. No, so I was kind of, whenever I've got people in for training, go through this system with them, I'd say that you're going to use the compound once a year. Yeah. And then the polish twice a year and then you'll do this every three, four months. Yeah. So, you know, it may seem a bit extreme, um, but you probably only do this once a year. So, pad's nice and primed. Per section, I'm just gonna put five little dots on there. Like that. This is all you need per section. When looking at a bonnet like this, you wanna kind of break it into kind of four sections. Because you're concentrating on the paint, you wanna make sure that area gets maximum attention. Now, yeah. when we move into polishing, you want to double that size, and then we move into waxing, you then want to double it again. Okay. Yeah? So, golden rule. I've got the cable over my shoulders, like that. This way, it's not going to rub on the paintwork. Every time I start and stop the machine, I want to make sure it's on the paint. That's why we're not going to fling product everywhere. So, you know how we prime the pad? Yeah. I now want to prime the surface, so I'm going to give it a nice even spread on the slowest speed. purposely put some on there just to show you that our products are plastic safe if you do get it on the plastics it will just wipe straight off good job cool so now the surface is primed i'm going to take the machine to a slap bang in, in the middle of four eight and five eight this is my go-to swell removal speed and i'm going to do i'm going to do four passes so i'm going to go up and down left and right and repeat that okay. and then i'm done on average i want to move at about an inch per second I'm not gonna put any weight on the machine. I'm just gonna use the weight on the machine itself. This hand will guide the machine. And this hand will make sure that pad is always flat. This will ensure you don't get swell marks or marring. So I'm gonna pull the trigger, push the button in, and I'm nice and chilled. So you have to move quite slowly to get the yep. result. The slower you move, the quicker the job gets done. So one thing I've noticed, and I've got a couple of questions, it's not, um, there's no dusting at all, is there? There's, Not at all. So, no. Is that due to priming as well? Uh, it's help? a few things. It's, it's a very slick product. That's why you won't get the, the kind of bulking kind of dust in there or anything like that. Okay. And yes, we've primed it, which yeah. makes it slicker as well, makes the pad and the surface nice and wet. And move, but also, move easier on the pad. Right? Exactly that. And also, we keep the pad flat. Okay. So if you have the pad at an angle on the paint, you've got air between that paint Pushing and your pad. 
pushing prototypes. Fine. This might seem a stupid question. Uh, the, the slower you go, the faster it gets done. You can, you're not going to damage the paint in any way by leaving it on there for a length of time, are no, you? No, exactly. So we talked about horror stories when it comes to machine polishing. Generally, a rotary polisher spins like this. And they're the traditional kind of body shop polishes you'll okay. see at professional So just using. in circular motions. Yeah, so that's a very direct rotation, which generates more heat, which means you have to use it a lot faster to stop any kind of burning. Now a DA does that, which means it's never really in one place at one time. Okay. Which so means the, the risk of burning is completely removed. Yeah, there's no, it's never in the same place at one exactly time. Exactly so, Okay, understood. So we're just going to take this product off, flip down. It comes off easy. It comes off very easy. Going from one side of the tape to the other. You're crazy. Easy. Okay, so my turn. So I've got my five dots on the burgundy cutting disc, as you can see. And then what we'll do is slow speed on the machine, stamp up where I want to work, and just spread the product. making sure it stays on the panel. On the panel. Nice. Um, and then Dale mentioned for swell and defect removal, don't know if you can see that here. Um, swell and defect removal, 4.8 and 5.8. We're gonna do four passes just like Dale did, going up and down, left and right. And I'm gonna use a little helper button to keep it pushed in so I don't have to dry my arm. Quickly before I start, is there a way to tell that you're not balancing it correctly? Yep. So these little lines on the back of the packing plate. Okay. Um, when they're spin spinning freely, you'll see that. But if you're on a slight angle, they'll start to judder. Okay. So when you've got a nice free spin, you've got a nice even kind of spread like that. Yeah. That's when you know you've got it on the sweet spot. Uh, okay, center. understood. So if you can see the backing plate has these lines on it there. Um, and so Dale just said, if that's spinning freely, you should be able to see it. If, if it's not, then they'll be like juddery. But I just want to check that. Towel, just to wipe off. Wipe one way, flip the towel, get the excess off. Oosh, look at that. Brilliant. Okay, so just to recap what we've done so far using the machine polish with the ultimate compound, we prime the pad, put five dots on the pad spread the area, and then in order for us to work the compound in, we moved it to 4.8 and 5.8 in between the two, which is swell and defect removal on this machine. Um, did our four passes up and down, left and right, and that was, hey presto, there you go. Easily done. Um, so that's the compound. That's how to use it, the machine, with a compound. We're now gonna move on to the ultimate polish, mm -hmm. which is a different process. So, new pad, new product. New attitude. Uh, new, hey, a new attitude, but that was not put on right. So, we've used the Ultimate Compound to revive the paint and remove those scratches and swirls. Now I want to refine the paint using the Ultimate Polish and our yellow polishing disc. So, process for polishing. Similar to compounding or not so much? No, so we're, we're, we're going to back off because um, we're not doing as much work. Okay. So we're going to use less time, less product, less effort. Yep. I'm just going to put kind of like a nice cross of product on there. Okay, so no priming of the pad. No, because it's like very that. rich and we're not overworking the surface, we don't need that lubrication. We're just gently feeding this in. We're just applying it rather than working it. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, we mentioned earlier about every time we move up a stage, we're going to increase our work area. So, this section that we split into two, when it comes to polishing, we're going to do the whole area, but we're going to do two passes instead of four. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, I still want to spread the product. I'm going to set it to the slowest speed again. Like that. Okay. And then we're going to take it to between 3.8 and 4.8. So we're stepping down. We're going yep. to do two passes. But because the machine's moving slower, 
we can move a little bit quicker because it's okay. not overworking the surface. Yep, yep, makes sense. We've moved on to a new stage, which means we want to get rid of the old towel. Now you definitely don't want to be cross-contaminating your towel, so you don't want to you don't want to be removing a polish using a product that's got compounded. So put that into the wash bin, use a fresh towel to remove the polish. Now, compound and polish should not be allowed to dry on the surface, so we're going to take it straight off. and like the compound, comes off super easy. Well, you can really see like a depth of gloss with that. 100%, so those, the oils that are in the polish are feeding into that paint yeah. and giving it a real deep gloss and magnifying that fleck just underneath. So a little recap on our step two, the refining stage. We've used our ultimate polish with our yellow polishing disc on a lower speed with quick, quicker arm movements to refine and give that paint a real nice gloss. And again, we took it straight off because you don't really gain anything from letting a polish dry on the surface. You only save that for the waxing stage, which is next. Final stage is the waxing stage. So we're moving on to our black waxing pad on the back of the plate, like so. And then ultimate liquid wax we're gonna to use today. Um, words. Oh. How much do I put on that? Oh. I, yeah, thought you, I yeah, thought you were doing yeah. it. No, I just meant I'll do it, but it's you go teach me how to do it. Oh, sorry. So come here, you. <laughs> so we're using our Ultimate Liquid Wax. It's a fully synthetic wax, which is going to enhance gloss and give it real long-lasting protection. Yep. And again, each stage we've gone up in kind of graded products. So we've used less time, less effort, and less product. Yes. Yeah. So again, with the wax, because we're just applying the wax, just need... Let me do it. Okay. Just need <laughs> just a thin little cross. Just a little cross? Yeah. That probably is a bit too much. No, it's fine. So, stamp out the area of work again. Yep, cable over your shoulder, more than Ooh. anything. Golden rule that number was one. Almost a fail there, Dale. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> so this is why, wait, because this is why it's called Detailing 101. I, I refuse for this to be a thing on a video that we are involved in. No. Stupid. Absolute. I'll do it, I'll do the waxing. And then waxing, polishing a three it and four it again. No, so you want to bring it down, so you know we've been spreading each product. Yeah. That is exactly what we're doing here. We're doing one pass and spreading it at the slowest speed. Okay. Is that it? That is it. You want one nice fine film of um, wax. Yeah. Because um, you don't want to overload the surface with wax. No, um, okay. Because you want it to cure nice and firm for a nice glossy finish. Good job. I feel like that's not enough, but actually it probably could have done the rest of the bonnet. Golden rule is you should barely see the wax on the surface. Okay. Good job. So we'll let that cure, about 10 minutes. Exactly that. And then we'll come back and take it off. Yep. So, whilst we're waiting for that to cure, mm -hmm. let's just do a quick recap of hey, everything. Let's, let's do so a recap far. of what you've just done. Yes. Yep. So, we use the Ultimate Liquid Wax with our black finishing disc. We use very little amount of product. So, as you, as you can see, it's a very rich product. So, that amount would easily do the whole front end of the car. Yep. Um, so, it's more than enough to do that small section. You can let it cure. Um, there's no kind of set time on how long it takes for a wax to cure, especially a synthetic wax, which is going to stay nice and soft anyway. Um, so what I tend to say is, if you start at the bonnet, work your way round the car. By the time you're back at the bonnet, it'll be time to take off generally. But if you're never quite sure, just do the finger swipe test. If that swipe is clear, it's ready to come off. If it's cloudy, just leave it a bit longer. Another stage, a different towel. So we've used the compound towel, got rid of it. Polished towel, took the product off straight away, got rid of it. You don't want to cross-contaminate the towels, because you don't want any product from the towel 
getting put on back onto the surface. So we're using our super soft, super plush finishing towel. And it's just simply because it's nice and soft on the paint. And we've left this about 10 minutes and the wax just slides right off. I don't know why I said it like that, but it does. Have it. That is how to machine polish using the three stages of correction. Using our ultimate three-step system to revive, refine and protect the paint. So we first used the ultimate compound with our burgundy cutting disc to slowly revive the paint. So it was the slowest arm movements on that one. Then we moved on to the polish. So again, each time we move up a stage, we're losing, using less product and less effort. So it's less product, but more work surface area, but on a quicker arm speed and a slower speed on the machine. And then we protected using the ultimate wax. And again, this was just using the kind of priming stage from both number one and number two. So we used it on the slowest speed, quickest arm movements, and the biggest amount of work area to get that wax nice and thinly layered onto the surface, let it cure, and removed it. And all of these processes can be done by hand, but for, for this purpose of the video, we wanted to show you how easy it was to use the MT320 or a machine polisher. Um, this is, it's made that process so much quicker, so much easier. The results are absolutely fantastic. Um, just looking at the bonnet now, the, the, the swirls that are on the side of the bonnet that we haven't done. Yeah, we've left it done. with a really nice stripe on the cap. Absolutely. So we are going to do the rest of the bonnet. You're so going to do the rest of the I'm going to do the rest of the bonnet. But thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something uh, about how to use the uh, MT320 or how to use a machine polisher and also a little bit about the products and how well they, they do their job. Um, if you need any more advice or help on these products, then they're all linked below. Or if you need any more advice on any of the products that are in our range, then definitely contact us via our website uh, using the Contact Us page or through Instagram or Facebook. Perfect. See you well in the next video. See you next time. Comment down below what you want to see next. That was a cheeky... Okay, bye. Oh. Yeah, oh, you're really walking. Okay. <laughs> Come to the side a little bit. No, no, not that. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> revived the, the swell marks. Right? We've revived the swell marks. I mean, we've revived the paint. Should we start again? Relieving them Let's from swell again. marks. Okay. Okay. You go. This is where it gets all between you and I. Come here, you go. Just basically two movements just to enrich that colour that's behind colour, gloss.